So uh, we're going to hop in today for our last session here, and we're going to focus on a, an area, uh, uh, the area of framing layouts. Actually, is where we're going to want to take our take our focus today, and just really wanted to start that discussion because you know maybe some of you are right now and you heard that you're like oh framing layouts don't use those or you know that's not relevant to me but it really just wanted to even just lead this discussion off with just a, a brief a few brief comments directed at that idea is is well why should you use framing layouts you know what what's what's the big deal um and really what it boils down to is just some things for you to consider if you're not using framing layouts already today is yeah you know a, a picture is worth a thousand words so being able to communicate and show to your, whether it's a, a client, a customer, the end user, maybe some salespeople through the process, being able to show them a picture of what you've done, just it communicates a whole bunch without, without having to necessarily just sift through a list. So it can be a very powerful way to communicate just to different people involved in the process. Um, there's also another building on that and just taking that concept further would be there's another opportunity here to build value in your customer relationships. And so as far as what you as uh, a material provider are providing for your your end customer, uh, whoever that happens to be in the building process, you know that you're you're providing more to them than just a batch of materials or a material list. You're providing them uh, the knowledge of their project, how you've solved problems for them, how you've helped them through that process. So um, just another part of the Velcro of that relationship that you can leverage in, in, as what you provide for them. And I'll even mention with that, again, kind of building from that point, is even if you're just using pre-built ML and or associated softwares to really just export something out as far as to your, your point of sale system to get a materialist, I will even comment that. And so maybe you're not leveraging so many of the report options within pre-built ML. Even still, uh, the, the framing layouts are can still be a very nice companion even to your quotes that may come out of your point of sale system because again they're just communicating what is going to be on that other quote but just give some visuals to it and and just helps build uh, build confidence through that process um, and then a final comment here that i'll just mention here is before we dive in is it's also going to be a really effective tool for that quote unquote no plan type of customer you know the, the guy who walks in and says hey you know i, I want to build a deck you know i don't have a plan or anything can you you know can you help me do that and so, and we're not going to go into this topic of how to do this today, but, you know, really easy. I just spent not I, just a few minutes, really, uh, on this little thing preparing for this webinar. You know, you just come in and say, hey, I want to build a deck. And I just by hand drew this deck using keyboard, mouse controls, and so on, laid this all out. So if someone, if a customer came into you and said, hey, I want to do this project, I don't have any set of plans, not only could you hand them a material list, you could also be able to, if they, you know, signed that PO for you, uh, hey, here I'll give you a set of plans, even to have how how we frame this thing out. You know, and where all the mat all that material goes in the process, whether it's a deck like this, or maybe it's even just a simple, you know, 24 by 36 shop. So again, framing layouts, great opportunity here. And so with that, let's uh, jump into how can we use those. And I we often refer to them within the context of the software here as framing layouts, just because that's how we tend to use them frequently. But but I'll just lead off here with a comment that, you know, when you're using a layout, which is if I'll show you what one is here in just a moment, you're not limited to the idea of framing, uh, though maybe that's the most common case. But even something like this, you know, if you wanted to show a siding layout to, to indicate, hey, what material goes where and how is that being done in the project? So I've taken off all my siding across this front elevation and I'm going to create a framing uh, a layout of that. And to do create a layout, whether it's siding or whether it's something else, you're going to come up here to the little camera icon. I'm going to capture it and just box around this, and I'll call this my siding layout. And now I've got a layout here visualized. And then in the upper right-hand corner, I've got the corresponding list of materials cross-referenced by colors. And if there were prefixes and suffixes on things, you know that would all be visualized here. So with that, and, and probably for many of you, you're, you're familiar with that concept, and, and I'm not going to go into all the a little bit more surface stuff or the basics related to framing layouts today. There's a lot more that could be learned, so if you have more questions about it, definitely ask us about that. But now I'm going to try to pivot off into maybe some of the a little bit less known things that you can do with framing layouts to really customize them and have them fit what you're trying to accomplish. So with that said, so I... Uh, but just to clarify, okay, so where did that framing layout go? You know, I captured it, but you know, I closed that window. Now it's gone. Where is it? Come on over here to the project tab up here, upper left-hand corner. I'm going to cross back the top over here to framing layouts. Any layouts that you create, 
get collected and stored here. So if you create a framing layout and then you didn't do anything with it at that point in time when you created it and you just closed that window, you haven't lost it. You can come back and open it. So the, here they are, here's my list, here's that siding layout and I can click the view button again to pull it up again and view it. And up here, I could send it to PDF. If I was using Hub, I'll just mention here that this is another opportunity to visually communicate things out to the field. For those of you who are Hub users, you would have an option here to publish this directly to your Hub for that project. Uh, so that would be available to people who are using the phone app and everything like that to download and take a look at. Um, but we've got our collection of layouts here. So, uh, so let's touch on a few of the other things that you may not be as familiar with. Uh, when it comes to producing framing layouts, you don't have to produce them just individually. So like these, you know, I can view them one by one, right? You know, that's what I've got and I can pr produce that to a PDF. But if I wanted to really just take all my home, my home batch of framing layouts, like I have five of them here for this particular project, and I wanted to just push them out into one simple document, I could select all of them. Now I could only select a few of them if I cared to. So whatever I have selected is fine. But I'm going to come up here to this option where it says view selected framing layouts. I'm going to select that. And now I've got that whole batch, that whole collection is sitting right here in, in this file. So that those are all, you know, all these are available for me to look at and I can push that out to a single PDF. In a similar fashion, if you're using the Publish tab, uh, quick passing note about the Publish tab, if you don't know about it, you really should. Uh, but if you're using the Publish tab, then you'll get that behavior when you push out your framing layouts, they'll all be collected into a single PDF for you. Uh, so anyways, that's something you can leverage there. But take advantage of that. View selected framing layouts. You can also, you know, you, it can be just, you know, a collection of maybe just the headers and the framing. You know, you don't want the siding in some cases and you want to uh, piecemeal it uh, accordingly. So you can control how that goes out. Um, viewport recapture. So here's a great button right here if you are not familiar with this. Uh, if you are, this is especially effective when you're doing revision work. So if you've collected like framing layouts like I've done here, or and this is maybe even more applicable if you're doing maybe a larger commercial job where you have um, you know, multiple different floors, even multiple different buildings. And, you know, I've, you, you've seen some, I've seen some lists here where you have 10, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, maybe even a little bit more than that, different layouts going on here. And so you maybe go through and you um, uh, collected all those framing layouts and it's like, well, I don't have to go back through and rebuild all of those again now that I've revised the whole project. So the cool thing about framing layouts is that it knows what page it came from and also what the the parameters or the box that were set for capturing that particular area. So what you can do is, is instead of having to go recreate it uh, and start from scratch and everything, you can just choose the viewport recapture and it will go back to that specific page, to that specific location and recapture that image and update you know, uh, everything accordingly. That also will preserve any notes that you may have attached to that framing layout as well as details and all the other settings will just be preserved. So you'll just basically be updating that image to get to the latest revision set. Uh, but in addition to that, you can imagine if you had more than just uh, five of these and you had maybe 10, 15, instead of having to go click through all these buttons of viewport recapture, similarly up here, we have this option up here where it says recapture the selected framing layouts at the original viewport. So you could batch uh, recapture everything. So again, if you had a larger project, lots of framing layouts, you could just select the ones that you know need to be recaptured and then just hit that button once and it will cycle through all those different ones, uh, collecting those different things. One thing to note that if, it, just to keep in mind, uh, it, it won't affect some of you, but it may affect some of you, uh, is that one thing it doesn't manage for you when you does recapture would be light bulb visibility. Uh, so you just want to make sure before you start your recapture that as far as the different areas of different pages that the light bulbs for certain items are turned off and on like the way that you'd want them to be on that particular framing layout. I'll pause here because I meant, forgot to mention at the beginning, uh, feel free to use the Q&A section in your uh, um, webinar controls. Uh, so there be somebody looking at those as well this time. So uh, continue to uh, throw in questions, whether directly related to this or to other questions that you might have. So take advantage of that. Uh, so now let's talk about notes. Uh, so a lot of, you know, when things come to framing layouts, people want to be able to add notes and you maybe have different motivations for wanting to do that. You know, whether it's disclaimers, whether it's like, oh, you need to sign off on this or here's more information for you. And so there's there's actually a quite a number of different ways that you can get notes, if you will, just, just talking about that generic concept onto a framing layout. So 
one of the more standard ways would be to come here to a particular frame and layouts like this um, uh, floor headers. And I'm going to come here to notes. And I can manage the notes for this specific layout. So I could come here to this framing layout note and choose to attach it. I could also create a new one. And so now when I go to view that floor headers, I've got this note added in here right there. So it's uh, and you'll notice that, you know, and I the way that I have this set up right now is, is that it's not showing any of the titles. Um, and so if you wanted all those titles, so I'm going to show here over this notes tab. Like view, I'm going to just edit this note, you know, so we've got all this stuff actually in here, like here's the text, here's the headers, here's the conclusions. And the way this is this particular template right now with that framing layout style set up, I'm actually only viewing just that main content. Uh, and I don't have like the header, I don't have some of the other information that's here. I just have this, the image and the text. Um, and maybe you've been looking to try to do that. Um, and if you have been, then that's, uh, I'm going to just remove this note. Um, that's we'll show you that in a second how you can control that better. So there, there's the standard note approach, um, and then uh, also point out this little checkbox up here: include include extra notes page. Uh, maybe from your standpoint, you would just like to have kind of as a cover page to a collection of framing layouts all of the notes that were related to a particular project. This might be a great opportunity if you're tending to use the software more to export a material list to your point of sale, and then it gets priced from there. But then you'd like to be able to have a batch of framing layouts along with notes and other information about the job that you could also give to a customer. So you could check this box up here. And then when you do that, any notes that are associated with the material on that particular layout would show up. So if we viewed all of our framing layouts here in this case, we're gonna get this cover sheet. And it has all of, in this case, all the notes, whether it's specific, like this garage header portal frame note, or maybe it's just generic project notes that were added here. Uh, you'll get a cover sheet. Now, this happens to be 24 by 36 uh, size paper. So, you know, you, these notes maybe feel a little bit small, but in reality, they are, you know, fairly decent sized. Also be aware, just in passing, that if you want different page sizes, those are here in your framing layout styles that you can you can view them. Another thing you can do with framing layouts is be able to batch or group those framing layouts onto a single page. So let's say I wanted to have all of my framing type uh, layouts collected onto a single page. So I've got my headers, my framing, and my walls and my roof framing. You know, I wanted to have all those collected onto a single sheet. Since this is a relatively small residential project, you know, it seems like it ought to be able to fit in quadrants on the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these. And here's another box up here that says combine selected framing layouts. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to give this, I'll, I'll just call this my framing collection. And what I'll end up with then is, as I've, you'll see here, I've got my framing collection layout and then my items are collected underneath it. Now I can choose to still view these individually, but if I go to view the collection, now it's going to take all those framing layouts and those are listed there. And they each of these has their title on the on the specific page. You can still edit these individually and move them around. You can you know still move the contents back and forth, but you could have you know the different parts and pieces on more of a consolidated sheet. Is if that fits better for some of the things that you're trying to accomplish there. So keep keep that in mind as well. Going back to the concept of notes, and I kind of interrupted myself there. I'm gonna, let's see, I'll just delete this for the moment. Uh, so other ways to get notes onto your framing layouts. So let's say that I wanted to have a note, by the way, you can drag and drop these, uh, if you didn't know that, uh, to create a different order of how they show up in, in, when you're doing a batch view of those items. Uh, but let's say that I wanted to have a note um, that was on all the pages. And I didn't really want to use the notes feature. I just had some text that I wanted to get on there. So how could you do that easily? So I could, I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to go to this, uh, I'm going to select all my layouts and I'm going to view them all. And let's say that I wanted to add a note. So one of the things that you can do is up here, you have the option to actually annotate uh, the layout itself. So rather than adding clouding or markup items and stuff on the page and then capturing that as a part of your layout, you could actually do your framing layout and then come in with to it and actually mark it up, whether it's with clouding or with arrows, with uh, with highlighters, or in this case, a note. So uh, 
And I see that, I just happen to see there's a question here that I'll answer live because I think I've had some different interest about, can you create a layout, um, can you create a, a framing layout without a materialist? And the answer to that is not, no, not currently, but we have heard that question a fair amount. Um, and so we actually are looking into that as a possible feature improvement coming up here. So um, keep an eye out for that one. I don't know exactly if, if and when that will be rolled out, but it definitely has been on the forefront here. So we'll, we'll be looking to see if we can add that in. Um, and, but then jumping back here, I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna add a note to this layout. Now you could do this by just typing stuff in here. Another thing you could do as well that uh, if this is something that you do on a regular basis, maybe there's just like a standard note that you need to um, add in. I'm gonna, I, I'm, so maybe you have these stored maybe off in a Word document someplace. Like for example, here, I've got this like out for approval or sign before shipping type of note. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it and that all that formatting and stuff will copy across here. Click okay. And I'm gonna put this in here. So I've got now my, my note here that could be used. And I could customize this further. Now talking about customization, when it comes to these types of notes, I can right click on this and I can say, hey, I want the background color to be yellow. I want to say have a border uh, size of say four and the border color is like black. You know, so now I've got this more of this kind of type of note that I have going on here. And by the way, if this is how you always do your notes, if you, and this is true for clouding or for, you know, call out lines and arrows. If you right click on one of those items, you have the option down near the bottom that says set as default. So all these properties then like the idea of a black border, yellow background, border size, you know, all that type of stuff that would be saved uh, within um, it so that as you do future ones going on even into future projects, you know, not just limited to this project, you could set those those settings as default. So keep that in mind as well if this is something that you use on a regular basis. But then what you also have is the option to say, uh, you in, instead of having to create that on every single layout, and this is something that could be a pretty powerful tool, if, especially if you have multiple framing layouts, like four, five, 10, 15, 20 layouts in a job, and you wanted that to be stamped on every single page, you can come to a layout then and an item that you have drawn like this in, or uh, an annotation. You can right click on it and you can choose to uh, copy and paste to all framing layouts. So I'm gonna do that, copy and paste to all framing layouts. And you'll notice now that that has been stamped all across all the different framing layouts in that location on the page. So you could really quickly you know, get, get something like that, whether it's a, again, like an arrow, a clouding tool, a note like this, you know, those could be uh, sent down to a lot of framing layouts all at the same time. And wow, it's already <laughs> running out of time and I didn't even get to touch on everything I wanted to touch on. And so what I'm gonna just do here, just really quickly, just to maybe it's a little bit of a teaser yet, just to, to point out, I can't necessarily have time to show you everything, but just wanna show you some uh, areas that you may want to look deeper into because they might be interesting to you as we finish up here as it relates to framing layouts. Uh, so uh, when it comes to the uh, the profile, keep in mind that you, if you come over here to the general tab, you have different options down here related to framing layouts, whether it's a cover sheet, a title bar image, you know, additional images that could show up on that for you, framing layout sty styles that you can control. This relates to not only page sizes, but it relates to other settings like what we talked about earlier it relates to notes. Uh, there's a ton of settings in here and things that you can control and really customize to how things show up. So whether it's things like, you know, whether you have a larger material list or a smaller material list, whether or not that material list includes certain columns or not, what order those columns are in, uh, whether or not um, that material list is extra wide or not. Uh, you can control the margins on the page. Um, you can also control when it comes to framing layouts, what your scale is, uh, how it you know how it measures out. So if it's 11 by 17 and you want it to be an eighth inch scale so people can put a ruler on it out in the field, you can do that. Um, yeah, so so many uh, custom plan details. So if you had a plan in your plan, you had a specific section, and it's like, okay, hey, you know, this is this is maybe unusual, and I want to stamp that on my framing layout so they understand. Okay, this is the condition I was trying to fulfill when I did that framing. You could have that detail from that plan right there stamped onto your framing layout as well. So lots, lots, and lots of off options to make framing layout. So overall, I guess is the takeaway for this 
uh, hopefully for you is if you uh, if you are using framing layouts, maybe there's some customizations that you hadn't considered yet uh, and you want to look deeper into. If you aren't using framing layouts, hopefully as you looked at some of these opportunities today, you might start to think a little bit about how could I leverage this because it's really not that much more work since you've already done the whole layout anyways, generally speaking, you've already done all the takeoff. So how could I leverage what I've already done to better build my customer relationships? Because uh, the tool that's available in here is, is pretty highly customizable and, and, and pretty powerful to, to get to that picture that's worth a thousand words. And with that, we'll we'll go ahead and close it off for this time, to, just in the effort of trying to keep things close uh, or uh, keep things short. Uh, we will leave the Q&A section open here for a little while, like we usually do. So feel free to jump in there. If you have more questions, uh, we'll try to answer those as well. Um, appreciate you jumping on live. And again, remind you, use the support. And then uh, as you have questions in the future, and then we'll be looking at you know where, where we might pick up another webinar series coming up in the future. But Again, appreciate all you guys. Appreciate your uh, your support and using the software. Uh, thanks so much, and you have a good afternoon.